So you've got all this info, and maybe you've got this thing set up. So what's the first thing we do? Well, the first thing I recommend you do in order to get the best use out of this thing is to build something called a temperature tower. And a temperature tower is one of these. And essentially, this is really important. It's a really, really important thing to do. Um, even if you've got a new filament or you don't know what, you, you know, you want to set the printer up for the first time, it's really, really important. So this temperature tower, I don't know if you can see there, but there are different qualities or grades of parts of the tower. So if I, you see here, right in the center of the camera right now, you can see that it's very grainy and not very nice. Whereas if you look at the top bit there, it's very nice, almost perfect, and the bottom's not too bad either. This is because I've used different settings throughout the uh, tower. Anyway, so this temperature tower allows you to fiddle about and you can identify areas within the tower uh, which will relate to whatever change you've made. Anyway, so the best thing to do is get this temperature tower and use some default settings, which I'll tell you now, and just start to print your temperature tower and, um, and you'll be able to get a grip of actually what's going on and how to best calibrate. So I'll just explain. So when you build your temperature tower, or when you can it to build to make the temperature tower, um, put the bed temperature at 70, um, put the nozzle onto about 200 degrees or so, um, change your flow to about 220, that's what I found, and start at 100% speed, which is quite slow really. Then what you would do is every um, every like 10 percent because there's a um, thing on here when you start printing there's a thing that comes up how much percent the model is complete so every say 5 to 10 percent go in here and reset the temperature to a little bit lower so you're going to start at 200 for example so after maybe 10 percent I'd reduce that to 195 degrees Celsius then after another 10 percent 190 185 180 etc until you get uh, and, well, until you go through the whole range. You could even start higher if you wanted to. But the idea is that you'll get a whole tower and you can identify certain areas. So you could say, alright, that was 200 degrees, that was 195, that was 190. And what you'll find is that one particular temperature um, appears to be so much better. So you keep all these other um, uh, factors the same and you just change the temperature and therefore you can tell which temperature is best. So after you've decided which temperature is best, you can then start playing about with other things. Like you can keep the same temperature. So say, in my case for this, the best temperature is 178 degrees Celsius. I know that because I've done it before. Um, so I could keep the temperature 178 and then start messing about with the flow. And then you can make another temperature tower, but start the flow at 222 and then go to 220, then go to 210 or 200 etc until you get a perfect flow and um, when you get the perfect flow the thing will look even better again and then you can start messing about with speed now incidentally that's what I've actually done here you see where it gets very rippled and not very nice that's because I increased the speed to near 200% and I put it back down over here so you can see that the speed actually makes it look a bit rough the speed here was about 200 and the speed over here was 130% which actually is quite perfect it looks pretty good so anyway um, I've just given you an overview now I believe just with these simple steps you could get massively better um, uh, quality models just from doing these steps anyway so now I'm going to show you the temperature tower or show you making it and then um, maybe it would just be a nice end to the video so I'm using this software here. Some other people like to use a software called Cura, but I prefer this one uh, for a couple of different reasons. But anyway, I've got a temperature tower, and you don't have to use this exact temperature tower. You can use any temperature tower. But what we need to do is hollow it out and do some. Uh, we'll change some settings. So um, let's see what I've already got here. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, that's okay. So what we want to do is make sure it's hollow. So Layer height, let's keep it 0.2 millimeters. First layer, 0 0.35. Um, I want one perimeter minimum. That's the thickness of the, the shell, which we only need one. Spiral vase, I don't know exactly what that is, but uh, it all works towards hollowing the thing out. 
Um, solid layers on the top and bottom, we don't need any, we just want the hollow uh, temperature tower. Um, that's all fine, fine there. Infill, we don't want any infill. Um, skirt and brim, we do want a skirt and the brim, so just follow those settings there, although it's not essential, you know. Um, speed, now, this is variable, it really is variable. I'm going to change that to 30. Um, and I think that that will be fine. The rest of these look okay to me. Uh, that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter too much. Yep, 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 yep. Let's go back here and ch look at the filament. The filament diameter, that's not right. The filament diameter should be about 1.7, something like that. 1.75 probably. Uh, sorry, 0.75. Is that right? No, it is 1.75. 1.75 mil, I think. Um, so temperature for the first layer. Um, let's say 100. And, well, you want it more than 178 because as soon as it touches the bed or gets near the bed, it seems to cool down. So I think we should say about 190. Other layers can be 178. Or for me, anyway. If, uh, for you, if you're messing about with temperatures, you might want to start at 200 or so and then go down bit by bit. The bed will be about 50, something like that. Um, we don't need to bother with the rest of that stuff. Cooling, um, I don't really bother with that. So that will do for me. Um, what are the other settings? Printer. Let's have a look at this one. I don't think I need to bother with any of that stuff. So we've got our settings. The next thing you want to do is just um, export it. So I'll just go and get my memory card, one second. And the next thing I need to do is just save it to the memory card. You can actually use USB as well, but uh, I'm not going to do that. And that will do its thing. Now I'm going to take it back out and go over to the 3D printer. Okay, so I'm back over to the printer and it says card inserted, print from SD, and there's temp 111. So we want to print this thing. Now, the bed here, you can see there's like blue tape on it. I do something else, I put um, a, a zebra label on. Now, there's no particular reason why I chose a zebra label, other than it just seems to work well for me. I'm trying to do this thing one handed. And I just stick it on there like that. And that'll be fine. Now this thing works for me. It might not work for you, I'm not too sure. But I've tried various different um, uh, types of material. And I found these labels work really well for me. They're thermal labels, so they're not, they've not got a papery type of uh, top. It's a smooth sort of topping. And um, I've also used masking tape, thick masking tape. And that also works really well. But certain things don't work. Anyway, so it's just heating up now. It's getting ready. And then um, when it when it starts, um, we'll see what happens. So if you're just starting out now, this is where you this is where you might want to fiddle with the temperature and the the uh, you know the nozzle temperature, the bed temperature, and the flow rate. So you want to set those things quite high to start with, I imagine. And then you'd want to just change one, which I think should be the nozzle temperature. You'd want to gradually slow it down every 10% or so. Anyway, it looks like we're, we're ready to go now. I'll just check the flow rate. And here we have it. So if you have a quick look at this, a closer look, hopefully I can try and explain what's happened here. In fact, we're going to need to put this in uh, some better light. 
So you see at the bottom here, it's really bad, isn't it? That's because the flow rate was too much. It was just glooping out. It was way too much. Then, as we got further and further up to the top, I kept reducing the fill rate and reducing and redu reducing and reducing until we got right the way up here. Now, as you can see, or hopefully as you can see, there's actually a bit of a balance. Now, over here, I don't know if you can quite see, but at the top, there are like lumps or like little holes starting to form. And at the top, it looks very weak. And I can actually see through, it's quite translucent. Now, I don't know if can more pick it out. Yeah, it can. But as you can see there, it's not right. Now, when we got to about here, this point here, that's when it started going worse and worse. So, yeah, you can kind of get get an idea of how this thing works. So you keep all the other settings the same, and just gradually change one setting, whether that's going to be the uh, nozzle or the flow rate, or even the speed sometimes. You will keep all the other factors the same, so that you can therefore judge which is the best. Now in this case, the fill rate at 222 is obviously not right. But it's also not right here, right at the end, where the fill rate was about 50%. Yeah. So, the best rate which you can see here by eye is around about here somewhere. Around about here, which was around about 80% fill, something like that. So for me, with this particular plastic and this particular uh, 3D printer, the best fill rate is around about 80% or something like that, 80 to 90%. So therefore, that's what I'll be using. And if we try and have a close look, hopefully you can see the quality is fairly good. Let's have a look down here, or ho over here, maybe even better. Hopefully the camera will focus. And there you go. And that's, that's how you do it. That's how you uh, calibrate this thing properly. So maybe you have to make a few of these towers, like I've done. I made a tower for, um, I made a tower for the nozzle temperature. I made a tower for speed and I made and I've just made another one now for flow. So now with knowing the three settings I can probably make a perfect one of these. So if I just write this down, now bear in mind this is just for this particular filament, each filament's different. I know that the nozzle temperature, the ideal nozzle temperature is 178 Celsius. I know that the heat bed, which you don't really need to, to make a temperature tower for, because it's either it melts too much at the bottom or it doesn't, or it doesn't stick at all. For this particular plastic, the bed temperature is around about 50 C. The flow rate is around about 85 to 90%, 85% let's say. And uh, what were the other things we need to do? Um, the speed. Now the speed you can actually go up to 130, I've tested it before. About 130% before it starts looking a bit rough. 130%. And basically, to come up with all of these different bits and pieces, I'd actually use this same principle here of building a tower in order to find the best result. And well, that's probably what you should do too. So anyway, I hope this video was very helpful. I certainly wish that I could have had a video um, several months ago when I was pulling my hair out wondering why I couldn't make good prints. Anyway, so yeah, I hope you enjoy it and thanks for watching. Bye!